Today is my birthday, guys. And as you can see, Clyde is oh so excited. Heidi. What are you doing with a pi bag of pirates booty, buddy? Are you snuggling it? Hmm? Do you have something to say to me? Huh? Do you have something to say to me? How about a meow for happy birthday? Heidi. You gonna say anything? You're such a bum. You need to get a job and support yourself. Look at the size of you. Jeez. Uh-oh. I've awoken the beast, guys. <laughs> Clyde, are you coming to say happy birthday to Mama? Oh. All right, guys, here we go. Clyde's about to bust into my pirate's booty. Better back off of that boy. That is mine. Oh. <laughs> He's coming to give me birthday love. Okay, here we go, guys. Good morning. Good morning to you, my beautiful friends. How are you today? I am in a wonderful mood, and I'm going to start my next project which is going to be a big one i found this stencil at michael's it's by art minds art minds yes art minds it was ten dollars i had half off it is a huge stencil 19 nope 18 inches wide 18 by 17 that's odd anyway it's of a big sunflower and it has leaves here in the stem. I also have one big ass canvas measuring in at 15 by 30. So here's what I did. I took first the stem part. Now I did this on the plastic first. I wanted to get a feel of how the stencil worked and I didn't want to do it directly on the canvas for the first time. I wanted to practice, which I highly suggest you do with one of these bigger stencils. So the first thing I did was I placed the stencil up towards the top here and figured out about where I wanted the head of the flower to be. Okay. Then I made a little like mark in the bottom petal here, just a little dot. So that when I removed it, and I will show you this when I do it on the actual canvas also. Uh, so when I removed it, I know whereabouts to put the stem. So I did not trace the flower first though. I traced the stem first. So I found that original dot that I had made right here. And then what I did was I took the tape measure and I measured the width of the canvas, which was 15 and a half. And to find the center, I went, I divided that into went seven and a half inches and put a dot. And then I kind of just took the stem, the stem and placed it where the dot was like kind of centered it halfway in between just like that. So you can see the original dot right there. So I put the stem with that dot right in the middle of the stem. So I drew the stem first, then I put the flower back up here, drew that, and then I came down and did the leaves. No, I'm not that good of a drawer that I did this by hand. So anyway, now that I have a feel of it, I'm going to rip off this plastic and I'm going to do it for real. I highly suggest, as I said, when you're using a stencil big like this, that you try first on the plastic just to get used to it. Um... It's not as easy as, oh, just put the stencil down and trace it. It was lifting up in spots. And now I know that I have to be very careful of that because I did practice first. So I'm going to do this on time lapse so it doesn't take forever. But first, I need to draw out my shape on my canvas, 
we're going to have fun with a lot of different things, do some mixed media art. Okay, so here we go. All right, guys, so you may have seen that I used some stencil tape by Martha Stewart just to hold the stencil in place. I forgot to mention that before I started. So here you have it. This area here, the reason why I drew the flower over is because I'm going to design over that little tip of the um, stem this way you're not going, it's going to look like it's behind the flower. All right. And I didn't bother doing the center circles because I'm going to do something different in there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start mixing up my colors a little bit at a time. I will do that with you. And I'm going to design leaves that are not next to each other. This is going to be a slow process because I want to keep the lines nice and crisp. I don't want them bleeding into each other. Um, and the only way to do that is to do a little bit at a time. So I may work on this leaf, this one, this one, and then this one, and then let it dry and then come back in maybe, I'll say four hours later and do a couple more. I'm not going to let it cure all the way. I just want to cure it enough to where it doesn't move anymore and I can work on the next set. Um, also, for the first time ever, you are going to see me using the new Blingit Milky Way Galaxy Diamond by Color Art. This stuff I'm going to show you can turn your resin art tints into a beautiful, shimmery color of any shade that you want. So for me, I'm going to be using the Peridot tint and I'm going to show you how to make this into a liquid form first and blend it in with the Milky Way. I'll show you all of that. This just came out. It's brand new on the website. I have my own personal code for this company now it is in the description below and it entitles you to 25% off your order. No minimum purchase. And um, yeah, the code is Tammy Anderson Art 619. So check out the description for that and other links to other things. And uh, let's get started, shall we? For this, I'm going to be using Stone Coat Resin as always, the countertop version of it. I get at least an hour working time and you want working time when you're working on a detailed project like this. So let me get mixed up here. I think maybe I will start with the, the leaves and the stem down here so I can show you how to use that Milky Way. All right, so first thing I'm going to do is work on making my tint into a shimmery shade that I think will go with my Emerald City green that I just mixed up. This is by ResinArt. So I have an empty cup here. These are just some clear resin for after when I need it. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of this powder into the cup. This is the texture of the tints. They have no sparkle in them whatsoever. They are a transparent color. So I'm going to put some of that tint in the cup. Then I'm going to take a couple of drops of 99% isopropyl alcohol. You could also do this with 91% and most likely even 70%. The thing is with alcohol, the higher the number is, the less water that is in it. So I like to go with the least amount of water possible when I'm working with resin. So I'm going to put a few drops in just to make a liquid tint. I'm going to take my little stick and mix it up and dissolve it. Dissolves pretty quick. Okay. So I'm going to set this to the side. I'm not going to leave the stick in it because I know it's going to tip over. Now I'm going to take some clear resin. Let me make sure I'm on screen here. I can't see what I'm doing. I have you set up in an odd place because this is so big. I'm going to take some of the new Milky Way Galaxy Diamond. This stuff is so fluffy and sparkly and it just melts into the resin. So I'm going to put some in there. You do not need that much. I always am heavy handed with the color. It's more of an addiction than anything. <laughs> so I just love to pour it in there and see it melt in. All right. So now I'm going to mix it up and now look at this beautiful white shimmery color that you have this is just absolutely astounding it's melted in it's gone the shimmer is fantastic so now i want to make a green shade for my emerald city so i'm going to take a few drops at a time of the tint that I just mixed up with the alcohol. This stuff is very concentrated, so it doesn't take much. I'm going to start with literally one drop. Well, one and a half drops that was. And I just got it on my canvas. Thank God I am going to resin over that part. So I'm going to mix it in and see what shade I get. And it's not enough, apparently. It's got a little hue of green to it. Nowhere near enough. So I'm going to... Hold on. Let me get a rag and try to get this alcohol off. Let's see if I can get it the tint off with a little alcohol on a rag. This is why you should never work over your canvas, by the way. Okay, that's better. I'll be able to cover that up. Don't know if you saw that, but I dropped some of the tint right on the canvas. Of course, in an area where it's going to be white. All right, so now I'm going to add, now that I know the, the strength of it, I'm going to add three drops. And let's mix that in. So now it's getting a little bit darker, but I still need to go much, much darker than that. So you can see there's still only a hint. 
The key of doing it this way is to not over add because it may be too dark. All right. So now that was at least five drops. It's a very light green now. So I'm going to keep going because that other green is pretty green. Pretty dark. So I'm going to add in that was three mls on the pipette. There. Now I have a nice light olive green to go with my other green, okay? So I'm gonna put my gloves on and we're gonna work on um, the stem first. Now before I go ahead and add glass and all the other stuff. I'm going to design this first. That's going to be done on this the second part. Now this is going to end up being a very long video. So I'm going to show you how to do a few leaves and on the sunflower head and just one of these leaves and the stem because it's just going to be a very long video if I show you every little step. So... Actually, I lied. I'm going to start with this big leaf here. So in the center, I'm going to put some resin here and very patiently, I'm going to spread it out. And I will put this on time lapse so you can watch in a minute. And just spread it out very carefully, very thinly. I do not want it moving because I don't want it to flow outside of the design. So a very, very thin layer of it, okay? I'm going to be careful with the cup to not hold it over the canvas because I don't want it to be dripping everywhere. Doing art this way can be very time consuming, but it's very rewarding in the end when you have these nice fine lines. And everything looks nice and neat. Okay. And, you know, if it does go a little bit outside of the barrier on you, outside of your design, you can always come in with a paper towel and wipe it back. So it's not ruined. Now for this fine little tip up there, I'm going to use a toothpick. Because that is how detailed I want to get. So. Just like that. And I'm going to come in here with my finger. And wipe that little smudge back. Okay. So now I have that color down. I'm going to come in with the darker color and blend it in. <coughs> Excuse me. 
And same thing again. Going to put down just a little bit. And I'm going to drag it into that lighter green. You can use a skewer, whatever you want to do this part, the feathering like technique. Okay. This canvas that I'm working on, by the way, I did not prep it or anything. I'm thinking since I'm doing a little bit at a time and letting it dry that there won't be a sagging issue. I'm hoping, anyway. Alright, so I'm going to get the rest of this in there. And then I'm going to get a chapstick and I'm going to feather that in nicely you could also probably do this with a paintbrush if you wanted to Okay, so it's time for the chopstick. I only mixed up two ounces of resin because you don't want to have a lot of, of resin mixed up when you're doing something like this. You don't want it curing on you in the cup. So just a little bit at a time. So you see how nice it can control that color using the chopstick? Now here it's really tiny, so I'll go back to the toothpick. And then up here also. Now let's do some zigging and zagging, ladies and gentlemen. Just don't get all crazy on me and go outside of the lines. Take your time. All right, there's one side. So now what I'm going to do on time lapse is I'm going to do this leaf. Or actually, you saw how I did this one. What I'll do on time lapse next is the stem, okay? And then for this little stem here, this guy, I will uh, think about what I'm going to do there. I'm not sure if I want to use some just glitter in there or what yet, so that will come after. but. I will show you how to I do the stem on time lapse, but it's pretty much going to be the same thing. Okay.
Alrighty, so that is done for now. I may have a little issue going on here with the stem going into the leaf, which is why I did not want to do the stem, but decided to do it. So I'm going to try to see if I can blend it in there. And if it looks funny, well, we'll have to fix it after. Um, I'm going to end up outlining these leaves in the end anyway. So now I have some resin left. I could start working on a few of the leaves up here. And one thing I want to try out is this new liquid gold I got. I'm going to be using this for some of these smaller, um, or no, maybe in the center here. One thing I love about this, I found this at Blick. I'll see if I can link it in my Amazon store. I love to shake this. Got like a couple of balls in there and it's so addicting. <laughs> so I believe it's just like liquid leaf, but a larger amount of it. And this was, I believe, $14 for this big jar versus six bucks for the little one that I usually get. So let's see how it works, shall we? All right. So I'm going to take some and put a little tiny bit in to this resin, not over my canvas, Tammy. See, that was almost a disaster because it leaked everywhere. Get into the practice of never working over your canvas. It will save you a lot of heartache. As I have learned the hard way. <laughs> All right. So, let's see how it behaves in the resin. Seems to be just like all the others. So, going to try to put it in these little areas here. Okay. Definitely don't need a lot for these areas. That is for sure. I don't know if anybody else has an obsession with weird smells as I do. But let me tell you something. I love the smell of this stuff. Gasoline. Oh my God. Especially on a cold winter day. Go to pump gas and you get that whiff through the air. <laughs> I know. I most likely need help. But hey, it's no fun being normal. That's what I say. So now I'm thinking I want to use it. See, what's throwing me off about this stencil is you have these little diamonds in between each leaf, except for this one, which was probably supposed to go down over the stem. So I feel like it's going to look funny if I do that one. But then again, see, these are little... Little, little, little. Then I got two over here. Hmm. Well, let's just go with it, huh? Spread that in there. I'm not going to... 
spread it out on camera because maybe I could skip. Hold on. Yes, no, yes. Eh. No, maybe. Why not? Let's do that. Because um, I don't want to take up all your time doing that. But I'm just going to drop some of this color into each of these spots. So that if the resin does start to thicken up on me at some point, which obviously it will, I'll at least have it out of the cup and be able to smear it around. So we're going to skip that one. We're going to go right here. And we're going to skip that thing, whatever it may be. My color scheme is going to be purple, blue, and pink. All right, so got that. So now, okay, we're going to start with, hmm, let's start with the blue. Because I'm absolute, absolutely positive on the color scheme for that. So the three colors I'm going to use are Sea Foam. Come on. Teal Magnolia. Those are two Galaxy Diamond colors. And then this is the Mermaid, which is a regular resin art color. I will mix all three for you. So you can see what they look like, and then I will put you on time lapse as I design the leaves. So this is the mermaid. And again, I'm working over my canvas and just spilled powder. So I'm going to have to wait for this to dry and then blow it off. I tell you, resin starting to get a little bit thick on me. It is um, over an hour already, believe it or not. All right, so there is. The mermaid. See, it's got a green undertone to it. Then next will be the sea foam, which I'm going to mix over here. Actually, I lied. The teal magnolia. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Look at that. So that is the difference between a regular resin art color and the Diamond Galaxy color. I'll hold them side by side for you. Okay, you see the extra, like these are shimmery, but these are super duper shimmery. Okay. Now, the last one I'm going to mix is the sea foam.
see there you have it all right so now what I'm gonna do is I will do um, I don't want to do this leaf because I don't want it touching the green I will work on this leaf right here what I'm going to do is start with the darkest color in the center which is the mermaid so dark first in there and I will wipe up after I'm done anything that went out of the lines so I'm kind of just spreading it a little bit just to make sure I have enough in that area. And then I'm going to go opposite of that one. Put some up here. Okay, then I'm going to take the next darkest color, which would have been the Teal Magnolia, and I'm going to lay it in there. So I'm kind of just, I'm not spreading it right to the edges in most places. I'm just getting it towards there. When, so when I come back with the chopstick, I don't have to work so hard. And then the next color, the last color, will be the sea foam. Okay, and then the same over here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use two chopsticks. I'm going to use one to blend the dark into the center, and then the other one to blend the lightest up into the center. This way I'll keep them somewhat, actually I don't even need chopsticks, I could use the stir sticks that I just used. This way you could keep them kind of neat and not so, not muddied, but I think I think you guys know what I'm saying. So I'm going to go this way and come right into there with it. Okay. Just kind of get it up in there. And then the lighter. These will also be outlined, so I'm not worried about those pencil marks. Okay. 
Hey. I guess you could use one stick after all. Just kind of pull it all down in there. There we go. So that's what I'm going to do to the other leaf. And then I'm going to fill in the rest of the gold. And then I'll bring you back if I decide to do another color. Um, actually, I'm sorry. No, we're going to do these here. And then I'm going to do this one and this one. Same colors if I have enough. And then I'm going to let it dry because it's getting pretty late. I'll fill in these gold parts and then we'll finish. We'll go on tomorrow. Alrighty, so stay tuned for the next part. Alright guys, so you can see everything dried beautifully. And what I did was there were a few spots like in between the leaf here where it connected. And I didn't want that. So what I did was I took a white marker and I just went through the area here to remind myself when I put the right white resin down, I need to go in there and cover that up. I also did it like around the tip of the leaf here. So this way when it's time to put that white, I'll remember to do those areas to fix them up. As you can see, very pretty. Let me give you a view with the flash on. These colors are just magical. Very, very pretty. And they sparkle, boy. Ooh All right, so I'm going to set up now, and I'm going to show you these colors that I have here. Well, I have the flash on. I might as well show you if I can. Let's see. So this is Amaryllis. Is that not gorgeous? Let me do this off of the canvas. This is the Lotus Flower. And then this is one of the regular resin art colors which is called Puppy Love. So, the ones that are really, really sparkling, that's the new Diamond Galaxy line. And, yeah, so that's it. All right, here we go. I'm just going to do one flower, and it's going to be the same thing as last night. I'm going to do a pink here, pink here, pink there, pink there. But I'm only going to do one because it's just repeating the same process, okay? So here we go. Okay, so again, darkest color down here, which is going to be... Actually, you know what? I'm going to start right over here. Can you see? Let me zoom it out a little bit. I'm going to do the one... Oh, no, you can see it right by the stem so it has time to dry over the next couple of hours and I could not worry about that stem anymore. So let me just make sure pink, purple, pink, purple, pink, purple, pink, purple. Okay. Just want to make sure it's going to work out okay. This amaryllis color reminds me of the most beautiful ruby slippers with a hint of hot pink in it. My sweet baby. Jesus in the manger. Would you look at this? Now that I'm really looking at it under the light, I don't know if you'll be able to see it. I know I showed you already, but... It's going to have a hard time focusing. You look at that, and there is no glitter in here. That is the light refracting off of the mica flakes. Is that not amazing? I think it is. All right, so that's enough of that. 
Don't want to put too much so that it spreads out like crazy. Just enough to fill it in. So here's the puppy love. It's just a little bit of a shade lighter. That's it. And then the lotus flower will be the lightest. of it all. Okay, take your stick or whatever you're going to be feathering it with and start blending it out towards your line, your lines that you drew, your shape. Sorry if you hear noise in the background, that's the kids outside playing and there's nothing I can do about that. School is out, and this is the official first day for them of no school, so they're all like a bunch of lunatics out there. But I have to say, I'm happy to hear some kids playing out there. You know, kids are so into technology these days. You know, mine is, I barely ever see her, I have to force her out of her room. Because it's not healthy to be in there all the time like that. But I found that I am not the only parent struggling with that, believe me. So here we go. I'm going to use the same stick this time. I'm just going to wipe in between. And then we'll pull this up in here. And the paper towel here. You know, the thing is, is if you're not happy with the pattern that you achieve, you can always do a second layer, don't forget. Actually, you could do a second layer with some transparent colors on top of this, and that would really, really make it stand out. All right, so I'm going to do three more of those, and then I'll be back. All right, so I had a little bit of resin left over, and instead of wasting it, I decided to mix up the purple off camera. It's the same exact process as the other colors. I am going to show you the colors, and I'm going to finish these two leaves, which will be purple off screen. Now, you can see here, I put down some pink, um, some lotus flower, and some amaryllis over that gold because I did not like it, but now... You're seeing the gold through it. So we're going to work on the area later. It's going to totally change. So I'm going to ignore that for now. And as a matter of fact, I've decided that I may actually pour these two leaves, let it dry. And then I'm just not digging 
these little partial leaves in between. So I may actually, once this is dry, come back and form these into a whole nother leaf and have it going over these a little bit, like um, almost like a 3D effect. You'll see what I mean when I actually do it. So let me just show you these colors. I put this flash on again so that uh, you can really see them. This is the Morning Glory. So beautiful. This is the Mountain mountain Mist. And again, there is no glitter in these colors. A lot of pigments that sparkle like this have glitter in them. And you'll notice when you put them on the canvas, they leave like a little sandy trail behind. And then this is a regular luster uh, color, which is the Purple Sapphire by Resin Art. All right. So that's what I used to make these purple leaves here. So I'm, as I said, I'm just going to finish them off screen and then we're going to address once that's dry, these little bits here and the, the parts where I put the color over the gold because I'm just not happy with that. Alrighty. So I will finish that and I'll be right back. All right, guys, so here's where we're at. I was not happy at all with these little half leaf thingies here. So what I did was I put the stencil back on top and I, with a white paint pen, drew in another set of leaves. And I'm now using some heavy bodied white acrylic paint to white them out. Now they're raised in some areas from the things that I didn't like. So when I come back and add resin to these, I'm going to have to be super careful. I'm going to have to put the resin here first and then just with a paintbrush paint it on this top part to make it one level surface. I just was not happy with that look and I need to get rid of it. So now in some areas, even though I drew the, the petal in, you can still see some of it. So what I'm going to do is after I design this set of petals, I'm going to go back with some of this white paint and cover that up and then eventually put a whole coat of white resin anywhere where, that's left where you see white. But I thought I would do this off screen because it's very self-explanatory. I just took the stencil, laid it on top, not in the same direction that I had it the first time. I just moved it over a little bit so that the petals would be in between each of the other petals and cover up most of these little mini leaves. Okay, so I'm going to finish this up and then when it's time for the resin... I will be back. So my leaves are whited out, but you're going to notice now I have some different heights in these white petals. So what would happen if I poured resin on this right now? What's going to happen is it's going to fall into the gully here. This part will be fine, but this part up here is going to overflow. So what I'm going to do to solve this problem is I'm going to add some texture into my piece, somewhat leveling these white petals off. And then I'm going to come in and either hand paint in the resin colors or I may use primary elements, I'm not sure. But first, I'm going to have you watch me mix up some glass bead gel with some of these art stones that I have. 
and I'm going to use a palette knife to fill in these leaves. So here we go. All right guys, so this part here is dry. And now I'm going to start applying some colors to the leaves using some gloss enamel and some primary elements. So here we go. Okay, so before I do move on, I just wanna explain something to you guys so what I did here so because I did resin here and I put texture up here at first I was going to do the second set of leaves with resin before I added the texture as I explained but because it was too ridgy looking I was afraid the resin would have a very hard time staying in one spot giving me a hard time so I needed to use the primary elements as I just explained to color these in using the uh, gloss enamel now the problem is is that I used resin art colors here now I have primary element colors that are not the same exact shade so what I had to do was kind of blend a couple of colors together to get the shade that I wanted so I went ahead and did the purple leaves, not on camera, just to make sure it was going to work all right. So as you can see, they match pretty well with this and I, I think it goes okay. So now what I'm going to do with you guys is I'm gonna work on the red ones. And for those, what I've mixed up is some Carmen, if I could find it here. So this is the Carmen. So it looks dark in the jar, but when you mix it up, it's this beautiful, beautiful, vib vibrant, vibrantly deep red, okay? And I think it's very, very close to this amaryllis that I used from the resin art. So although this looks a little pinkish in the jar, it is looking red ruby slipper red on here so what i did was i mixed up a little bit of the carmen primary elements in here and then what i did was i poured a little bit of it out into another container and with some let's see where is it interference red pearl because the interference colors will lighten uh, the shades that you're working with. And some of the Milky Way Galaxy Diamond, I ended up with this really, really nice, shimmery, soft pink. So th this is the same color. You can see them side by side, but I was able to lighten them. So it's as close as I'm going to get to matching these colors. And just like when I did the resin, I'm starting with the deeper shade here in the center. And I will show you this, or not the center, at the base of the leaf. Is that where I wanted to put it? Yes. Now I'm starting off with that darker shade. I'm kind of just dabbing it in. Another thing I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to carefully take this canvas, and I will not be doing this on screen because it's going to be too hard for you guys to see. And I'm going to have to take a very thin paintbrush and just go along the inside here to cover up the side the stones where you could still see the white okay so I'm gonna have to 
go in there very carefully. And then my ultimate plan is to encase these with rhinestones before I step, get on to the next level. But that may be a little challenging. I mean, I'm going to try it. And if it's just too much of a pain, then I'm just going to abandon that idea. So that's why I left these white areas to put the rhinestones in. So again, start with the darker shade at the base of the leaf and then work the lighter shade up into it or the darker shade down into the lighter shade, whichever way you want to go. This is a very time consuming project. That's why lately you've seen me uploading a lot of acrylic pours. Well, I've wanted to try different techniques, but also because I'm working on this behind the scenes, trying to get it ready to upload. This brush that I'm using is a piece of garbage. It's got to go in the trash. It's like one of those kids' brushes. I don't even know how I ended up with it. These, these colors, these primary elements dry very shimmery. So now I'll come back in with the darker color and kind of just feather it down into the lighter shade. Okay, so I'm going to do the rest of my leaves. So I'm going to do three more red ones, then I have to do blue. For blue, I will stop in and just show you the colors mixed up so you can see what they look like. But besides that, I'll probably do it off camera because it's just the same thing over and over and, and it's a lot of repeti repetitiveness. Alrighty, so I will be back. All right guys, so got the leaves almost done. What I'm going to do is come in with each color. I am not going to do the rhinestones as of right now because I have a feeling it's gonna be a really big pain. What I am going to do is I'm gonna come in with, like for this leaf, I'm gonna come in with some bluish green and just fill in this white area with paint. The same colors that I used for the leaves. now. For that bluish green color, which is very close to that resin art color, the two that I used there, see how I have two there, very similar. For those right here, this is what's awesome about the primary elements. You can mix them to make your own shades. And this worked out perfectly. So in the resin art colors, I had used um, teal magnolia, Mm, maybe teal magnolia and I believe it was the mermaid and the teal magnolia I'll have to go back and watch the video after but anyway um in the resin art colors so in the primary element colors what I did was I took a little bit of peacock feather and mixed it with Bolivian blue and I got almost exactly that same shade that I used in the leaf and then this here was um, teal zircon with a bunch of that Milky Way in it to really lighten it up. So it's shimmery and it's that nice minty color. And it's almost dead on. You could see here's the primary element colors I made myself and there are the resin art colors. So worked perfect. So what I'm going to do in the center, I believe, is I'm going to start with um, probably the red and pink. And then I'm going to add a ring of purple around it and then the ring of the greenish blue colors. 
And then this here, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do afterwards, but I will show you the center right now. Okay guys, so I have all the leaves uh, colored in. I've outlined these upper leaves with the paste on it. Now I have to figure out a way to fix my mistakes, right? So this one little piece of leaf that I'm trying to remove from existence needs to be covered somehow. So. The only way I'm coming up with for this is I'm going to have to do the background in a texture because this is quite raised and I can't just paint over it. You're going to see it when the piece is done. Even if I cover the background with resin, which would be really hard to do at this point, just straight resin because... Just imagine trying to control resin to not flow over these leaves in certain areas. It would be pretty, pretty hard. I would have to do like a little section here, you know, between the leaves and keep watching it, keep wiping back. It would be a nightmare. So my idea is to put down some glass bead gel over the entire background and then come in with my clear resin and clear coat, or if I want to add a little interference colors to the background, do that with the resin. But at least I will have that nice textured background, which will cover this up. So that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do now. So let's get started. And it is annoying that I have to worry about this background because of this one little thing here. <laughs> I have to say that. So the glass bead gel is pretty simple. You just put it wherever you want it. It dries clear and looks like little beads of glass. So I'm going to just, and I'm not going to make you watch me do this whole thing. It's simple. Just take your time and go around these areas. Like this, this will take quite a while for me to do because I do have all these areas and this is quite obnoxious to listen to. So just take your time, go in between the leaves. If you have to get a paintbrush out, which I probably will, you know, just get it in there and cover the entire canvas. I also have to worry about this area in here. So yeah, it's going to be quite the process, but I really don't think that you guys need to watch the whole thing because it's just very boring. So what I'll do is I'll do the entire piece but not like see right here, I'll get up 
close to it, but not try to finish that area. I'll just do the big areas first and then come back and do the detail work. All right, so let me finish that. I'll wait for it to dry and then we'll go on to the next step. Now that I have the glass bead gel everywhere except for in the center here, I'm going with my palette knife and creating texture all over the background. Create a little bit of interest in this piece. You can see it's already drying in some spots. It's so hard, hot here. Right there, it's drying already. So I'll just take a little bit more where it's really dried. Spread it out and create that texture. Sorry, it's hard to do this with one hand. So again, just until I'm happy with what the background looks like, okay? All right, so remember I had that area over here I was worried about covering that was raised. You saw me come in with some really heavy body white acrylic paint and go over that area first with this. And then I came back with the metallic and went over that again. So <clears throat> there were a few areas like that that I had to do that to, to really cover it up. So that's why I need to do all this texture paste. Well, it was nice to do the glass bead gel anyway, but I wouldn't have had to do that if I didn't have that spot there. So there were a few spots like that that I just lightly covered up. This was another one over here. I'm just blending them in so you can't see them anymore. And um, as you notice, it's very patchy looking okay but I did that on purpose because now I'm going to mix up that gloss enamel and I'm going to do the same thing in the areas that are uh, left open that don't have the white metallic and I'm going to try to blend them in together so let me just get that out here somewhere maybe So this is what I'm going to be mixing, those Bling It Interference colors, which interference just means color shift. It's the same thing. So if you see a paint that is color shifting or somebody selling color shifting uh, mica powders, that's what they are, they're interference colors. And this is so if you have a blue paint and you add this into it, you're gonna now have a blue paint that has some uh, violet undertones to it. Now these here, the Bling It line, there's different types of these. This is the sparkle one. There's a actual interference pearl one. Uh, there's a few of them, so. If you want to check them out, colorart.com. Don't forget to use that coupon code. Um, so I have one, two, three, four, five of them I'm going to be using. I have blue, violet, green, red, and gold. So what I'm going to do is take some of this gloss enamel 
I'm going to put it in the cup. Just like so. Sorry for the banging on the desk. I have you on my desk. I'm going to shut my fan off because that will blow these all over the place. And then all I have to do, this is the Violet Sparkle I'm using. Put some of that in there. Give it a little mixeroo. And now what I have is a gloss enamel that has a beautiful, view, beautiful, wow, <laughs> beautiful violet sparkle to it. And I will show you that. Hopefully the camera will pick it up. Hope you can see that. So yeah, so now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna mix up the five that I have and I'm gonna apply them one at a time. So the first one, I'm gonna use the same brush, I think, the violet. Just gonna go in those bare areas and it's not gonna show up right now. You're not gonna be able to see it probably at all. But when it dries and you walk by the painting, it's gonna light up like a Christmas tree, baby. I'll be honest, I kinda like the white textured background like that. I was gonna try to come in and do some, uh, maybe like a bright yellow. And then I was thinking, God, what if I have to do black to cover up those spots? I don't want my, even though the colors would pop a lot more with black, this signifies happiness to me and black signifies darkness to me. So that's why I kind of want to try to stay away from it. But I have to admit, they would really pop against the black background. I'm just going to put a little bit over that white area there. And I'm sure this is going over some of the white too, but it's okay. I'm doing it more just for the effect afterwards. And I'm also, I think I mentioned, going to be adding glitter and stones to that center. So, yeah. All right, so I'm going to mix all of these colors up. And what I will do is pause you. I'll show you each of them. I'm not sure if it's picking up on the camera. I can't tell. And then off screen, I will put them all on because you don't need to see me painting on a bunch of gloss here. You really can't see anything once it gets on the canvas. So I'll do all that and then we'll come back for the final steps of the resin and the glitter and all that. All right, so first I have the Bling It Red Sparkle. Not sure if I turn a cup, if you can see it or not. Okay, so that's the red. This is the blue. It may just be looking white too, guys, but I'll show it anyway. This is the green. And then this is the gold. So just as you saw me apply the first color, I'm going to apply these and I'm going to let this dry really good overnight, most likely. And then it will be resin time. All of a sudden, I have the song 
she'll be coming around the mountain when she comes <laughs> stuck in my head I don't know why but anyway we're getting there it's almost done so I let this dry I only placed my racks here around the center where I wanted them so now all I'm going to do is carefully with my stick from the inside here just drizzle some resin I want it to act as a glue but I don't want to put so much in that they float off on me if that makes sense and then I'm gonna let this dry and then once it's dry I'm gonna come back and do the final coat I'm trying to decide if I really want to put rhinestones around these leaves these bottom leaves I may do it depends on how feisty I'm feeling but either way I am very proud of this one and tomorrow is my birthday and yeah I'm gonna try to avoid that topic <laughs> I don't want to get any older god it sucks it really really does I will be 46 and I know it's nowhere near old but it's not 21 either so yes it is what it is I am happy in life and that is all that matters so just drizzling this in there you just want to plaster those down first and the reason why I do it like that is because if I put all of the resin on right now I would have a hard time with these moving on me so I'm gonna just do that little area let it dry and then I will come back in and do the whole coat but I am really really happy with this I cannot wait to show you this background because it is phenomenal when you actually get down and look at it you know turn your head to the side or what have you it's just really shimmery and you see blue and violet and green and gold and and red and it's just amazing I love it so I'm happy I did that and let's see here yeah I think that's all I really need for this area I don't want to overdo it I have a little bit of resin left here I'm toying with the idea of using it on these upper leaves but hmm hmm don't know what to do if I should do that or not I mean I'm just thinking because it's going to take a lot of resin to coat this if I put it here it's going to drip down onto these leaves but then these will be covered up by the layer no I'm just gonna wait I'm gonna to stick to my original plan so I'm going to let that cure I'm gonna find something to dump this leftover resin on and uh yeah i'll see you in the next screen all right guys so we're at the very end here and i'm going to be doing the final steps which is i'm going to which i've already started i have some resin in the cup some old paint brushes that i don't care about i'm going to hand paint on each leaf a nice thin layer of resin okay also on the tops and then in the center why am I going to do it like that 
Oh, by the way, I'm also doing the leaves in the stem. Why am I doing it like that? Because if I were to try to cover this with a final coat of resin, it would take probably, well, at least a half a gallon, if not more, because you have these raised petals here and it's just going to take a lot. This is a 15 by 30 canvas, so it's pretty big. So it would take a lot. So painting it on is still going to give that nice glossy look for that you look for when you have resin. Also, what I'm doing is because the background is textured and there are some spots that are sticking up high, again, a flood coat is not going to cover that. I would literally have to encase this in probably a half an inch of resin, and that's a lot of resin. So what I'm doing to achieve that same shimmery look is painting the leaves, and then on the background, I'm taking a little sponge I'm dipping it right into the resin and then I'm sponging it on to the background. So you'll get that nice shiny look. It'll be in the nooks and crannies and I won't have to waste a ton of resin. Plus with a background like this, you want to be able to see this background. You want to see that texture. All right. So just go ahead and sponge it on and torch it as normal and you'll be good to go. Last thing I'm going to be doing to this is I'm going to be adding rhinestones, not all around the petals, but just to the tip of each petal. Um, I don't feel it would look right with just rhinestones right at the tips here and I can't design it in a way where they would look good coming down the sides also. The only way I would have been able to do that was if I did the bottom leaves, added the rhinestones, put a cold clear coat of resin over to seal them in and then design these leaves on like two layers up. So I'm just gonna put one on the tip of each petal and you know something, I'm fine with that. This piece to me, I absolutely love it. It is simple yet elegant. There's a ton of work. I have so many hours of work into this piece and I really, really hope it finds a loving home. So with my quick stick, I'm just going to plop it right there on each one. If you do rhinestone work, these things are a lifesaver. I'm going to put them in my Amazon shop. I absolutely love them. They have a little wax tip ball that you pick up the rhinestone with, and then they have the little flat end to flip over rhinestones that are on their backsides. They just work magical. So I'm gonna finish doing the sponging, the painting, and the rhinestone attachment, and then I will give you a final look at this baby when she's dry in the morning on my birthday. Well guys, she's all done. She's quite sparkly. And quite beautiful. As I said, you will see the uh, Blingit colors show up when you walk by the piece. Right. Sadly, for us in the resin world, there is no, there are no proper, or shall I say, Good quality uh, 
sources, I guess. I don't know what I'm trying to say to film this stuff because you do not see the true beauty of it no matter what you do. But anyway, let's see if I tilt it a little bit. Mm. Now you can see it a little bit there. Anyway, she's done. That's all that matters. She's sparkling and she's looking for a home. So if you're interested, email me at artbytammy at yahoo.com. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Don't forget to check out the Amazon uh, store link for a list of supplies that I use. I love and I hope you guys all have an amazing day as for me I'm off to celebrate my birthday so I will tell you this I love you all and happy pouring <laughs>